And now my spirit twists out of my breast, my spirit out in the waterways, over the whale's path. It soars widely through all the corners of the world. It comes back to me eager and unsated. The lone flyer screams, urges onto the whale road, the unresisting heart across the waves of the sea. Thus the old English poem, The Seafarer, suggests that alienation from nature results in the human spirit traveling widely, if uneasily, over the world, urged on by signs and nature. Ultimately, the poem suggests that human beings are homeless here and looks toward the Lord in heaven rather than in the warrior's mead hall or the city for home. This is a contemplative poem. Reflect as you consider it on how the words themselves emerge from and craft at the same time a certain sense of nature with capital N, perhaps in part a nature that is a gift economy from a greater Lord than any human, but nonetheless fallen in a way not found in Antony's desert experience. Seabirds bathe, preening their feathers, frost and snow fall mixed with hail. Then are the heavier the wounds of the heart, grievous with longing for the Lord. Sorrow is renewed when the mind surveys the memory of kinsmen. He greets them joyfully, eagerly scans the companions of men. They always swim away. The spirits of seafarers never bring back their much in the way of known speech. Care is renewed for the one who must send very often over the binding of the waves a weary heart. Here in the old English poem The Wanderer, we even see the poet's persona hallucinating about his lost friends as seagulls, only to realize that the birds are not his lost friends. Nature becomes a reminder, like Beowulf's dragon, of the passing of time and the bittersweet sadness of what Tolkien called the tragedy of each mortal human life. In the dream of the rood, however, we see something more at work, something suggested in the faith of the two earlier mentioned poems, but more fully developed in the persona of the talking tree. This may be the earliest extant English poem. The runic verse of it on the 8th century Ruthwell Cross in Scotland suggests it may have emerged in an area close to the Celtic language cultural zone, Carvings on the cross include a motif of St. Antony meeting another desert father, which is also found in Celtic contexts. Its language echoes hymns known in the Byzantine world, to which the Celtic Christian zone was closer historically. Another panel of the stone cross shows Christ apparently being recognized by beasts of the desert. It reads, Jesus Christ, the judge of righteousness, the beasts and dragons recognized in the desert, the savior of the world. It seems appropriate that a tree should be the earliest voice in English poetry. The cosmic tree as a symbol spans Norse mythology and the Bible. The cross as the tree of life is both horizontal and vertical, as seen also in the early medieval Irish-influenced cross at Nevern in Wales. It symbolizes perhaps what the environmental philosopher Arizim Kohak calls the essence of personhood emerging in relationship, namely the intersection of time and eternity, of two worlds coming together in an ancient sense of nature. <laughs>